Right, big track in bits. Giving it a good wash. Come up, or, uh, come up okay. This is uh, stripped down as about as as far as I uh, I want to go. Uh, looked at the gearbox yesterday. Decided that wasn't going to strip back down. Appears to be working fine. Motors seem to be working fine. Uh, yeah, there's all the uh, electric gubbins. Keypad, cleaned that up yesterday. With a bit of soapy water, be careful. Uh, optical sensor there. Which I think uh, is what's causing the, the jerky moving issues with it. That's the jack that the uh, big track transport plugs into. That goes on top. Speaker. That's a bulb holder that repaired yesterday. Soldered. Can't really see. Anyway, it's still tried it, and it's still a little bit dodgy. You have to wiggle the wires a bit. So whether there's a broken wire in one of these yellow wires, don't know. And went over the back of the circuit board just with the soldering iron really and dabbed each one of the connections with some the soldering iron and some fresh solder and well hopefully it's made a difference All right and now we're going to put it back together first thing is First thing, we'll pop this, just a plastic piece that fits in the back of there, just slides in. It's quite tricky to get it out, fits on there and then there's just two, two bits at the bottom which squeeze in and click. Alright. Time to put its brain in. Some battery connections for the rear batteries. That goes in first. The little notch cut out. So it goes in the right way. Slides in the top. In there. And turn it over. And you can see the notch. The notch slides onto this piece here, so it's all in the right way. And then there's this battery holder which just slides in. Took a little bit to get it out, uh, don't know, it's not glued in or anything, it's just uh, just slides in. But it took a bit of wiggling to get it out, but it goes in like that. Before you screw the uh, circuit board down, you need to put this through this hole here. That's the optical sensor for the gearbox. Speaker slides into. of grooves there and that's that's all that holds the speaker in it just slides in the front ok 
go and fasten the uh, circuit board down now. two small screws on the left hand side one larger screw so only two size screws most of them are the long screw it's three short screws two of them on the left hand side of the circuit board and one for the optical sensor into the gearbox. Right. Can do two ways here really. You can either put the top section on now because you can still get to the terminals that the motors clip onto the circuit board here near with this on. Just enough room there, you can still see them. Wires poke through these holes. So I think I'll put this on first actually. This is the base for the keypad. Just a bit of cardboard on top of there. Nothing fancy. The lugs on the back, okay, into two holes there. Cut away at the top for the ribbon cable to sit in. And basically, that's it, it just sits on there. And it's held in place by the top the lid, whatever you want to call it. So we'll turn that over. Six long screws. Just to point out, this is the uh, original big track, not the uh, 2010 big track, which all the electronics inside it are completely different. The actual, the whole thing's completely different. Never seen one in the flesh, only just what I've seen on the internet. But when you look at those that have been taken apart, they are completely different. And I don't suppose there'd be many interchangeable parts between an original Big Track and the uh, 2010 Big Track. I think one of the ways of just quickly uh, identifying a, an original big track from the later version is on this section here where the MB sticker is. If there's no MB sticker, the, uh, the new version uh, has got like a, an indentation in the plastic around this area where the... Uh, the the sticker for the 2010 version goes the original uh, big track it's just a it's just a plain flush plastic piece it's not there's no indentation at all and it's quite obvious when you look at it Now this is the fiddliest part I've found so far, is fastening the uh, optical sensor. I'd like to, I'm assuming maybe, I don't know if the infrared or, or whatever, don't know. 
but the uh, whatever they are, some kind of LEDs shine through a hole in this uh, gear wheel at the top has uh, holes all the way around it so I guess it counts holes basically to uh, see how far it's gone Right, bear with me here. It is fiddly. So this is the uh, fiddliest part of putting it back together. Probably, uh, I guess a magnetic screwdriver would be uh, make it easier, but. Uh, uh, That's the uh, optical sensor onto the gearbox. Uh, feed the motor wires through the holes. Top case. Four screws hold the gearbox on, but before you uh, screw the gearbox fully down, you need to fit the front axle because once the gearbox is fully down, this part here, you can't get the front axle in. It actually, holds the front axle in, in in place with the gearbox screwed down. So uh, that's you can see the repair that I did years ago. I don't know how bad I did that repair. Fifteen years ago, probably. Yeah, okay. Win no prizes for uh, for aesthetics, but does the job. On the gearbox, these two front mounting screws here, on mine, uh, the threads have basically worn out in the plastic. So uh, the screws no longer tighten up. Uh, properly, which uh, managed to find. These are that's the original screw, and found this screw, which is just a little bit longer, but long enough to do the job. It's actually from a uh, just a, a Tamiya radio control car kit. Uh, got lots of these spare. Uh, normally I replace the Tamiya ones with uh, proper set screws. So uh, I've got a bucket load of these. And looking at the heads, even though that's... They are very, very similar. So, uh, yeah. I shall... Uh... Use those to fix it. In fact, I shall use longer screws in all four because I've just screwed that one down and that's stripped as well by the look of it. I have got four. There they are, four screws, longer screws. Just screw the back ones in. They might be a little bit wider as well because they do feel tight going in all the way. Gives you enough play on the front. Slide that in there. Like I say, with the gearbox held down, that front axle is uh, held in position.
gearbox on. Right, and I think we'll put the wheels on now. Um, four wheels, they're all the same. Oop, speaker's just falling out. And these, they just clip on, take them off, like I say, they just, they just pull off. I'd make sure the plastic's probably room temperature, really, before you start, try and start taking one of these apart, as with them being, <coughs> getting on the best part, 40 years old, the plastic can turn a little bit brittle. But, yeah. Back in. Little red top for the uh, on and off switch, just slides on top. Right, I don't have the nut for fastening the uh, big track transport socket on, so uh, I'm just going to leave that inside out of the way. Course, a great deal of oh. All right, plug these uh, motor wires onto the uh, you say you can get them, it might have been easier to. Do them before we put the top on, but like I said, there is just enough room to get in and put them on. The right hand side, the circuit board, red wire goes to the front, blue wire goes to the back. On the left hand side of the circuit board, it's the other way around, blue wire goes to the front, red wire goes to the back. Just in case you uh, didn't take note when you were. Uh, Took them off. That's that. Right, front section. Because I used the uh, longer screws in the gearbox, it gave me some spare screws to screw the top back down. I don't know if you uh, watched the other video where I took it apart that the uh, the screws were missing in the top. Uh, I'd obviously had it apart before and not screwed it back together. Also, put a bit of tape on the uh, the repair that I did years ago as well. Uh, that had two uh, exposed connections. So, yeah, single screw holds the uh, Bulb holder in place. Oh, sorry, photon cannon or whatever they call it. Right. And the nine volt battery connector goes through that hole. Goes on, two screws, the I think these should. Fit a little bit tighter than what they do. You can see on mine a couple of the pegs. There's a peg on the front there that's snapped off. Two on the back are still there. Same on the other one. Front peg snapped off. So, uh, but we hold in. 
let gravity uh, do the rest of the work. It's a 9 volt battery. Battery cover. The battery cover again let's say repaired the battery cover snap the uh, tag off a little bit when uh, I was cleaning it up and decided to uh, to bend it up a little snapped it off so uh, it's just soldered back on There she is, back together. One clean big truck. Now then, is it going to work? There we go. All right, the trouble we had before was the reverse, but to be fair, I don't think you use reverse that much. Be nice if it did work properly, but we'll go forward and see. Definitely better than it was. The jerk turning still as well, really. It seems to turn left. Okay. I always found on a smooth surface normally big track turns like the minutes on a on a clock face so 15 is 90 degrees 30 is 180 degrees so 15 that way or if you want to go all the way around you'd do 45 to point it that way but it always seemed and it did when it was new to overshoot on smooth surfaces and on carpets it would uh, it wouldn't quite actually make it so on carpet you'd probably put in an instruction to turn instead of 15 you'd say turn 17 maybe just to get it to do a 90 degree turn but on a smooth surface you do 15 and it and it overshoots to 90 degrees so if you uh, let's say turn maybe 12 still gone a bit too far so that was part of the fun of it really just playing around with it and getting it to uh, try as be as accurate as he can to get it to where he wanted it to go Yeah, that was 10 that so it did pretty much the 90 degrees but on carpet it'd probably take 15 16 maybe to get it to do that but yeah all in all better than it was I'm happy with that. There we go. Big track. 1980.